Do you see that? I mean, that is straight up in the air right there. All terrain. All terrain, AT. construction site for a little while this morning they're fixing to work and I got a scratchy signal right here and I've got another J hook that's a good find mm -hmm. what about seven you had a good day buddy. I had a good day you had, had a, a good, good day, day. Uh, well, I didn't have a good day well I had a decent day but man he killed it today. I, yeah I had a good day uh, this has been a good time. Anytime you can get three videos, this is our third video yeah. off this same site. Got us through the summer. Yeah. Summer's tough to get through, I tell you. It is, especially with it 110 degrees. I mean, yeah. and a lot of days is, and humidity so high. Yeah. We had a uh, rain come through. What day was that? Uh, Tuesday. Day before yesterday? Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday. And uh, it, uh, humidity's down today. Mm -hmm. Uh, 57 degrees in Tompkinsville when I left this morning and I hope that it just continues to go on down and on down and oh on yeah down. it'd be not I mean it was real nice this morning you get out in the Sun it warmed up a little bit but it was still a lot better than it has been I got a uh, bottom off of a uh, Williams cleaner right here the uh, little zinc insert Bring up in the 50s, 51, 53, something like that, on the AT Pro. Well, I got me a, another Williams cleaner here. This side has a lot of those, which is kind of rare in our part of the country. We don't have too many. I'll take that one. Well, I got the top to the Williams cleaner I found the base. That base, uh, zinc base goes right in there. That's another one. Now I want y'all to be the judge. Of course you can't tell how high this is. This is straight up and down. And uh, Jeff's got a signal he wants me to film down there says it's a good one I'm gonna if you see this camera go over and over and over and over don't worry it's just me I'm going down the hill mosquitoes are bad around here I sprayed there a minute ago oh let me get my footing and get back around over here let's see what he's got What is it? What was that, 58? It yep. looks it, yeah. Yep, 58. Good job. Stand it. right there for a minute. Now I want to go down here to the bottom and I want to look back up. And if you find something else right there, I'm not coming back up. I'm going to go down here at the bottom and I want to show you what this hill looks like. I gotta get down here where I can see it. Do you see that? <laughs> I mean, that is straight up in the air right there. All terrain, that's what it is. All terrain, AT. We're giving a pinpointer away that's AT as well. You can put it underwater. I'm about the same spot here. And I came all the way around right there 
and came up the end of that and now this boy wants me to go back down. I'll meet you halfway. Uh -huh. I'll put one foot right there. What is it? 69 round ball. Well good. See if you can find one more before I leave. <laughs> Alright. This is a small grommet. So I suspect that that's a poncho grommet. Soldiers would wear to try and keep uh, uh, during rainstorms and things, try to keep dry. We may both be wrong on this, but go ahead and point to it there. See it right there? We think, oh, I'm not up there now. We think that that is a, uh, a J hook. Go ahead and see if you can get him out. That's what it is. Nice J-hook. You know that one I found was right above it up on the hill up there? Was it? Yep, this morning. Makes two today for me. You gotta catch up. I do. Got another infield. I think that's about three infields I've found on this site. Of course, it's been occupied by different troops, different sides. John Hunt Morgan came in, uh, Jeff said, and captured this in 1862, so I'm sure that they stayed here for a little while. And then the Union moved back in, but that's a good find. We got here this morning and the uh, <coughs> construction workers were working, and so we, uh, we hunted the pile where they been hauling the dirt. Yeah. Uh, I think we each found a J-hook. You found two yeah. J-hooks. Yeah. Found a little bit over there and then uh, we knocked off there what to, about dinner? Yeah probably. yeah well see they uh, they went to lunch and then we made it up front for a little bit and then of course you run into that little hot spot and then we had to leave when they got back so. What did I find before dinner? Uh, you found a 69 and a couple of buttons. Yeah. And of course that was up front. Well, I got me a big old 69 fatty there. I think a horn bush every time I get one of those. Because he loves those so much. But I do too. I mean, they are great finds. I'll take it. Got an eagle button. I believe it's general service. I think the shank is broke on this one. I'll just have to get it in and get it cleaned up. I'm sure it's general service. That's a great find. Got me another Williams cleaner here. I'll tell you what, I love this site. Just for those. I got another eagle button. I can't tell that's the way it goes right there. It's general service. It does have a shank. Back of it's being in just a little bit, but the shank's still standing up good. You know, we found a lot of buttons here and you kind of just kind of get accustomed to finding them, I guess. But I know that there's people around the country that give anything in the world to find one of those. We're very fortunate to live where we do. I have a big old 69 round ball there. I like those too. We left here after lunch and then uh, we went and got us lunch and went to uh, uh, Greenfield Fort and uh, of course, I didn't really have any luck there. I don't know what you ended up. Well, you did find a harmonica reed. I found a harmonica you reed. Did anytime, that. <laughs> anytime, and I don't know if if you guys know it or not. The only time I have not found a harmonica reed is if we hunt solely just a Civil War site. Yeah. Anytime we go to a house site, I'm finding another one. I got another one in. Uh, well. I don't know if you've seen that video yet, but I've got another one. And then I found one today, and uh, it was at a house out. Me and Jeff have moved to another spot while we're waiting for the uh, workers at the Civil War camp to uh, finish up. And I've got an Indian head here. I can't get a date. You may be able to see that right there. 
but I will get one. That's a great find. This came up like this and I thought for sure I had a V-nickel until I turned it over. You see it's silver dip there. That's a flat button. All right. Out of that hole right there. There it is. Piece of a harmonica reed. They're not safe around seven. And then we came back, and uh, there was a there was a lot of guys today, huh? Oh yeah, the, let's see, like five or six. Yeah. There's a mosquito Get. trying to eat us up right yeah. here. But yeah, he could find a harmonica reed in uh, Rivergate parking lot. So I mean, that's just the way it is. But yeah, that when we got back this evening, there were they were already two out here, and then uh, of course, as <clears throat> soon as the uh, construction workers got done and left. There was like three, three more. Three coming. more came. Yeah. There was, uh, would have been five. They've been seven of us. Yeah, there, yeah, they? yeah. And so, uh, it looked like a DIV almost. It did. And I guess everybody, yeah, everybody uh, we talked finding. to one or two there and, and uh, everybody was finding bullets. We're waiting for the uh, construction crew to uh, quit later this afternoon. I thought I'd show you this. I'm at the, uh, working along the sides of this slope. And uh, I got a 49 or 50, thought it might be a button. But uh, this is a little brass bar that is off of a uh, uh, officer's shoulder strap. That is a good find right there. That's something that you just almost don't find because it's so small. <laughs> I was very fortunate to find this little brass bar that would have been on an officer's shoulder board. All Union Army officers during the Civil War were required to wear shoulder boards on each shoulder whenever the epaulette was not being worn to show their rank. The second lieutenant had no bars. First lieutenant would have one gold bar on either side. A captain would have two gold bars on either side. A major would have a gold oak leaf on either side. A lieutenant colonel would have a silver oak leaf on either side. A colonel would have a silver eagle in the center. A brigadier general would have a silver star in the center. A major general, two silver stars in the center. And a general in chief, three silver stars in the center. The shoulder board color would be red for artillery, green for sharpshooters, yellow for cavalry, blue for infantry, and black for staff. When I compared this little brass bar with others from the Civil War, I noticed that there was a difference between the two bars on a captain's shoulder board and the single brass bar on the first lieutenant's. Here's a close-up of a captain's shoulder board on the left and a first lieutenant on the right. You'll notice on the captain's bar that the lines form a small arch and are close together with no gaps. But on the lieutenant's bar, the lines are straight and diagonal and there are three small gaps. If this shoulder board is for a first lieutenant, which the research seems to bear out, then I can name the soldier that wore it. But first, let's talk about the camp. The Union Army captured Gallatin in February of 1862 following Ulysses S. Grant's capture of Fort Donelson. Gallatin was strategic because of the railroad and its location on the Cumberland River, both of which the Union Army sought to control. In July of 1862, General John Hunt Morgan recaptured Gallatin and held it until the Confederate forces fell back to Chattanooga in October. In November of 1862, Union General Eliezer A. Payne retook the town and the Union troops occupied it through the remainder of the war. The local citizens lived in fear of Payne's reign of terror, as witnessed by 
the 36-page diary of a 16-year-old Confederate sympathizer named Alice Williamson, a schoolgirl in Gallatin. She wrote from February to September in 1864, describing Paine's reign of terror in Gallatin. On February the 19th of 1864, she wrote, Our king, old Paine, has just passed. I suppose he has killed every rebel in 20 miles of Gallatin and burned every town. Then on March 12th, she wrote, Old Payne dined at Mrs. Hale's house today. Everyone despises him, but they're afraid to show it. Yesterday, he went up to a Mr. Dalton's house, whose son had just come home from the Southern Army the day before and that same day had taken the amnesty oath. Riding up to the door, he inquired of Mr. Dalton if his son was at home, but before he could answer, his son came to the door. Payne then told him to get on his horse and go with him. After insulting the father, he carried his son a half a mile away and shot him six times. One of Payne's escorts, hearing the young man groan with pain, placed a pistol to his temple and remarked, I will stop that, sir, and he shot him again. But this is nothing new. This is the fifth man that has been shot in that way, besides numbers that have been carried off by scouts and never returned. Well, by April of 1864, information concerning General Payne's brutal tactics had gotten as far as the Western Army's high command and Payne was removed from his post in Gallatin on April the 29th of 1864 by the orders of Major General William T. Sherman, who transferred him to Tullahoma, Tennessee, much to the delight of the citizens of Gallatin, Tennessee. But others under Payne's command also had little regard for the rights of Southern citizens, and that brings us to the man that would have warned this officer's bar. On March 14, 1862, General Payne angrily brought charges against First Lieutenant Theodore Brown of the 51st Illinois, claiming he did at a dwelling house in the town of New Madrid feloniously steal and take away certain goods, to wit one coat being the property of one Mrs. Craig. If it had not been for this charge, we may have never known of First Lieutenant Theodore Brown. Brown was born in Vandalia, Illinois on May the 12th, 1835. He died in Chicago, Illinois on December the 22nd, 1909. He's buried in Graceland Cemetery in Chicago in Section G, Lot 220. The interesting thing about this charge was what happened to Brown. He was promoted to captain in July of 1862 and given a variety of responsible recruiting positions in the Union Army until his discharge in May of 1865. So apparently, being accused by General Payne did not hurt his reputation in any way. Wow, what a find and what a story that one little brass relic can tell. I left my GPX at home. Kick my... like Jeff's using his GPX out here. Got what looks to me like a 36, 40? 40, 36. That's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I know, uh, well I found this right out right out in there and then uh, of course it was fairly deep and I thought well I'll just hit in this little spot with the GPX to see there's any other relics. That's part of a J-hook there. Uh-huh. Which is a good find. It's not a bar though, but I mean, hey, yeah, I'll take it. That's the first one of those I've ever found. Yeah, I've never found one. Never seen anybody find one. I was just lucky to find that one. Well, I mean, you know, you're just that good. Yeah. You kinda got the same swirls as your bar does. Oh, it's not an eagle button? Uh-uh. Get your focus in there. I 
believe that's a rosette piece or something. Or is it a button? I don't know. Hard to tell, ain't it? That's a nice one right there. I'll tell you. He's in there with a lot of iron. I have I found it, heard that little beep and I thought, well I better dig it. Well, I got a 69 round ball. I love finding those. I've got an eagle button. It's pretty brittle, I think. I'm not going to try and do too much with it. It's a little cuff. But you can see the eagle trying to come out right there. I'll wait till I get it home, get it cleaned up. I'd say it's general service, though. There's constant sirens here all the time. They're not coming to get us, but before it gets here, that's a uh, 58 caliber mini ball, three ringer. I'll take it. I don't know if we'll have another one off here. Uh, hopefully we will, if they move a little bit more dirt or we get a chance to come back and hunt again maybe uh, one day next week. It's been a great sight. Uh, it really has. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to our colonial sites and things opening up. Yeah, I, so we can I want to get that. that colonial. Yeah. And find that, well, what was you fixing to say? Uh, uh, Spanish, Spanish silver. coin? Yeah, Spanish yeah. silver. We've got to find one of those. So. Uh, we're ready to give the uh, Garrett AT, a pro pointer AT away. Yeah. All yeah. terrain. So who do you think is going to find it first? I don't know. Uh, you found the last one, so it's my turn. Yeah, it's your turn. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't work out that way. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it this way. The, the next person that finds one is the one that's got to buy the pro pointer. <laughs> uh, but we enjoy it. Mosquitoes, mosquitoes. Man, they're Everywhere. terrible here. It's in town, mosquitoes, man. They, what do they want with old blood? I don't know. Why don't they get new blood? They are. They're, they're all blood. over me. No. Anyway, uh, that uh, that kind of wraps this hunt up here. And uh, we had a good day and, and not extremely hot. We didn't drink as much uh, uh, RCs, Pepsis, Mountain Dew, and water yeah. as we normally do. I only drank a half gallon this today, so <laughs> instead of my regular gallon. But <clears throat> I got to keep it fueled up. That's yeah, yeah. Got to keep your figure up. Yeah. Anyway, and we want to, you know, we want to say this every time how much that we really do appreciate. Mm -hmm. I had a couple call me from, uh, from Arkansas. Uh, Monday I think they called and and uh, left a message and uh, I was I don't know what I was doing but I had my phone turned off I think it was at the funeral home or something and uh, they called and uh, just wanted to tell us how much that they appreciated watching our videos Man, and that's good Thank you, you very much you have no idea what that means to us you know for people to to do that we need to do a shout out Digger Dean and his wife. You remember them at DIV? Yep, yep, Digger Dean, yep. Uh, we ate breakfast with them, mm -hmm. and then uh, he commented on a video, and I said something to him. I was, he had said something about DIV, and I said, well, we need to get together sometime and meet. He said, we did, at the breakfast <laughs> line. And I said, oh, that was y'all. And so we want to do a shout-out to uh, Digger Dean. Uh, you see his channel here. We're going to put it up. Mm -hmm. uh, go and check him out. Uh, he does some good hunting. He makes some good finds. He does Civil War hunting just like we do. Yeah. So and a real nice guy. I mean, yeah. Him and his wife both. Yeah. So. They're they're great people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we appreciate them. And uh, I know that he will appreciate you coming to his side and uh, uh, liking and subscribing and watching his videos and everything. Yeah. Anyway. Um, uh, mosquito. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yep. See you See next you. year.